the conversation around children was very scattered, you know, and uh, I could see that the traje- trajectory that she's on, like, could potentially lead down a road where she just gets so um, involved in her career that children, you know, are not an option. Again, Jenny, it's great to see you here on We Leadership, and hello to the audience listening in. Hello, Damien. How are you today? <laughs> I'm very well. Having a great time. I always enjoyed our chats about leadership and the combination of the feminine and masculine in leadership and how those combinations work together. And what we're really excited about is the discussions we have had, and we've had a number of, for the audience, we've had a number of discussions offline about this new paradigm of creating a combination of, of families being able to, to start having children earlier, while at the same time working with the organisation to have a greater loyalty, if that's the right word, but being able to, to work more in combination together so there's less risk that the family doesn't isn't able to have children because of you know aging affects that that ability yeah I have to admit like when we first started talking about this I you know I didn't sort of think of it as being a bigger problem as it as it is as I can Mm. see that it is um and when I looked into my own sort of friendship group and networks um I was surprised by how many women I could identify who'd sort of gone through that phase of their life and have come out and they're sort of 40, you know, Mm. or nearing 50 and haven't had that opportunity to have children. I was really amazed at how many women were in that, in that category. Mm. Um, And certainly when I look at, uh, you know, I shared this with my daughter as a result of us having these kinds of conversations, I started talking with her and um, she's 23 and you know, she's primed to um, finish her university studies and get a career and focus on that, and that's that was her path. Mm. And um, I know, you know, the conversation around children was very scattered, you know, and uh, I could see that the traje- trajectory that she's on, like, could potentially lead down a road where she just gets so um, involved in her career that children, you know, are not an option and Mm. if she's making that decision consciously like she doesn't want to have kids and she doesn't want to be a mom like that's I don't think that there's anything wrong with that at all um but it was more that if it eventuated without her having a conscious you know um Mm. interaction for want of a better word with her like it's just happened because she got so engrossed in her career and then she suddenly looked up and she's got no partner and you know like <laughs> what do I do and the clock is ticking um so it was it was really interesting to be able to have that conversation with her and I think I shared with you um I was so obviously very passionate about this but as I started to delve a little mm. bit more and started having some conversations with university professors here in Queensland I started to discover actually their students are already having those conversations with them as they're starting to graduate um from university about How do they fit in a career and um, a family life and how do they have it all, so to speak, um, you know, and and achieve that sort of place of nirvana, if you like? Yeah, and that's a a dynamic which is is really challenging because there is that drive to go, okay, want to achieve that career. Um, I can't say that 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 applies for me because my my career was more about avoiding things than and so when something I didn't like something I moved on to something else um so I didn't really think about it that much but when you've got that drive to have that career and and you're really focused on that but not and then going okay how do I balance the family but then I have so many friends around the world 
who have have done just that. They, and a lot of them talk about how they got into a relationship while they're still in university, got married while they're in university. People are going, what are you doing? But they say, and you, they say you don't even know who you are yet. Um, and, they, and what was interesting that they said was actually they developed together, which made their relationship stronger, which was an interesting factor that I hadn't considered. Mm. Uh, and they had the children early, they balanced it well, and now they find um, a lot of them actually gone off and now started, the children are in school and they've started businesses together and they're working together in businesses, which is really an interesting dynamic that the world has enabled us to do that. Um, but from a career perspective as well, when we're looking at it, when you're younger and the learning process that you go through, and this is where it's an ad advantageous for an organization to support this, is when you're younger and have these learning and trainings, the value add that is there is not as much as when you're dealing with someone that is, say, 10 years into a career because the knowledge base is so much higher. So there's a higher end training there. Um, so if someone was to, if a family was to have children and, and um, take some time off, both the mother and the father, even taking time off, the training that they can do, you know, watching videos and, and learning, because we can do a lot of that online now as well, um, they're able to maintain that knowledge. But if you have that gap later in life, um, you know, if, if you, if you, you know, say have children at 22, 23, I'm just pulling numbers here just for an example. <laughs> What you're going to learn in that space, or even if you're not in the work environment for that space that you're off, you're not missing out on a great deal that's going to be for your movement in your career. But if you take time off in your, say, mid-30s, that's when there's a whole raft of, of specific knowledge that happens, which makes it really, you, you'll miss key things. And when you come back, everything's moved forward so much. Um, that it becomes more difficult. Well, that that's my interpretation. Maybe there's there's different um, analogies to that, but being able to do that as a, as an organisation to support people earlier, um, and then they come back with that knowledge. You've got that foundation to continue to move forward through those areas where they're actually higher higher skilled um, and more value more value add to the organisation. That's where it's of value to the organisation to support this. Um, yeah, absolutely. I I think that sort of um 35 plus is where your career has the potential to change particularly if you're following that sort of corporate mm. line um and that's where you have the potential to miss out on more opportunities if you're then exiting the workforce i mean it's it's not a given but um mm. yeah but, so what do you think that people should be doing instead <laughs> well, not that they should be doing, but, but I, I think mean, well, there's certainly an advantage to an organisation to supporting um, people, families that want to have children earlier, and setting up a structure which enables those people to actually have that time to have the family, give them the support to do that through those earlier years, because that knowledge base, the value add, is a lot lower. Um, and then also too, if you're supporting them with that as an organisation. Obviously, they're staying with you and there's a loyalty there. Um, and then when they come back and they've, they've got that training and as they continue to move forward, because once the children are in school, there's a lot more time to do the things and, and um, do those career things. Which send, So if you're looking at someone that's had children in their, say, the, the mid-20s, by the time they're getting close to that 30 mark, where the real value add that they have as far as knowledge for the organization they're then back dedicated to the work because the children are at school and they've got that ability to do that and that's where i see that the advantage for organizations to actually be focused on that and as we know in today's environment with the way the demographics of, of people have changed the aging demographic and and the, the difficulty in finding um uh, employees being able to create that that ongoing relationship with people so you have those sustained um uh employee relationships because finding new employees employee turnover is a massive cost to to organizations um to be able to create that relationship early where you've, you've got that ongoing training you're creating a, a good value connection um and then when the employees have they've got their children in school they're in that prime of where they're going to be adding value to to the organization so I'm going to play devil's advocate here yep. for a little bit because right? I think 
there's probably a lot of organizations that are doing it quite tough. A lot of HR managers that are losing sleep right now because they're not necessarily <laughs> there is definitely able to attract or retain staff. And there's only so much money you can throw at people at the end of the day. So what you know, what do you think that um employers realistically can do? You know, if we're talking about supporting their staff, what does that actually look like on the ground, do you think? Oh, that's a whole topic, and we could be here for days going through that with a structure. But that's what we do at We Leadership, though, is, is we do that. But part of that structure is is certainly having that support in the sense of, you know, one is security, providing that security, because certainly from a, a young person's perspective, there's that fear um, of, you know, how am I going to support children? How am I going to do that? So having that security of going, okay, I do have a, a position here, I do have a job, and I am, I, I not only that from an organisation, if you set up a structure where people feel valued and appreciated, then they, they if they feel valued and appreciated, they feel more secure in what their, their job, um, and that enables them to do that, but also to create, again, that, that loyalty. is Does it work for everyone? And there's always going to be the people say, oh, but it didn't happen here. Yes, there are times where it's not going to work. But more often than not, when you create that relationship, I mean, so many, and you'll know this from your own um, people that you've worked with throughout your life, that there's there's people that just stay with companies forever because they feel appreciated. They could move on and do something different, but we, we forget from a, an employee perspective that to change jobs is also an unknown. So, that, so a lot of people, if they feel comfortable where they are, well, we know that people stay in their comfort zone. If they feel comfortable where they are, they feel appreciated, mm. um, they're more likely to stay. And that's where an organisation, if you can create that feeling of, of comfort and security, um, it'll enable, especially in that time, because having children is is scary on so many different levels. And certainly from a financial perspective, if, if there's that job security, they'll go, okay, I've got, you know, I've got this environment where it's not only I'm securing what I'm doing, but I'm securing how I can manage my life. Um, I think that's a great attraction for employees. You know, it's you. It's kind of interesting. You reminded me of something. Um, <clears throat> as a as a kid, uh, my dad used to work for the original telecom, um, and they were really good at looking after their staff. You know, they'd have mm. sort of family Christmas parties at the end of the year, that kind of thing. Um, but it just reminded me how much people are do want that sense of belonging. Mm. Um, and organizations are primed to fill that role in some respects and and how that has been lost for a lot of businesses yeah. you know that sense of family that sense of community inside of the organization um, i remember yeah, no you go for it yeah i was gonna say i remember that exact same thing the the organization my dad worked for the christmas parties the different events that happened throughout the year that it was more focused on the children and creating this for the children, which was because I was a child at the time and I experienced it. And that was, well, that's how it felt to me anyway. There was all these different things where the kids got together and and they had that sense of community. So maybe what we're really talking about here is not a new work-life paradigm, but a reborn work-life paradigm. Yeah, I mean, because as I said, like this uh if you feel that safety and certainly safety, a lot of the um, sort of surveys that are coming back for that demographic of young people in, in sort of 20 to 30 age groups, safety and security, like having mm. a home um, is coming out in a lot of those reports and surveys is something that's very important to them. Um, then you can see that there's, there's the potential to shift somewhat back to that. Yeah, exactly. I think that covers that very well from that perspective of of companies, you know, and where that work life paradigm is 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 creating that security because that's and the appreciation that goes with that as well. That's a yeah. whole different topic, but how to facilitate that? Um, but certainly from a you know, enabling families to to have those family have those children earlier with the security that they are going to have a job that they can you know buy their house. Um, that kind of thing creates a, a strong loyalty to the to the company. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think we could talk about this for quite some time. We'll do many subtopic or subsets of this, I think, going forward. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Damien. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Jenny. Bye.